Good evening! In this video we're going to be showing you how you can set up a private proxy server on a CentOS dedicated or virtual machine. Okay, so before we start with this I just need to kind of point out the obvious. Um, if you don't own the machine physically in your like house or whatever, um, then the likelihood is, is that your VPS provider or dedicated server provider may very well not like you doing this and they may have terms and conditions that basically say if you do it you're going to get suspended. Um, so make sure to check those out before you do anything because I don't want to be responsible for you getting suspended or getting that removed. Um, okay, so we might as well get started. So we're going to be following a tutorial which was recently entered on our website. When I say recently, I mean this morning. Um, so we can find that by going to the CentOS tutorials and going to the how to create your own squid private proxy on a VPS or dedicated server. Um, okay, so what we need to do is we need to obviously have a server. So I have one set up here. Um, it's not very powerful. It's only got... Um, Let's have a look. It says on the website that I wrote this morning saying I've got 2 gig RAM, 2 gig swap, 20 gig disperse, 1 IP. That's all you really need. You don't need much at all. Um, so, what we're going to do is we're going to just make sure our server is up to date. So, we're going to be doing the yum command update. And this little hyphen Y just means it will ask us um, if we're sure we want to update all the packages which is uh, quite obvious because we're updating the packages so of course we want to update the packages okay so once that's done which it should be in a minute um, we will be installing nano and squid so nano, uh, nano is going to be the text editor that we're going to be using to um, open the files and then we're also going to be using um, squid as our proxy server so it should be done in roughly now-ish maybe not okay i'll pause the video and see when it's done one sec okay so once that's done we can just uh do the install command for nano and squid so yum install hyphen y nano squid and that shouldn't take too long at all so the next thing we're going to do is we're just going to make a copy of the configuration file for squid this is just so if we make any cockups and um, we can just restore it back and we don't have to worry about doing a full reinstall or anything like that so we can do um, just a copy command, so copy squid to squid.conf.back. Um, that's pretty simple. So what we're going to do now is we're just going to be going into the squid configuration file. And as you can see, there is quite a bit of junk in here. We don't really need any of this, so we're just going to be deleting it all. So if you're not sure how you can do that, you can just hold down Control K and it shall delete each line at a time and everything's gone. So what we're going to do is we're going to paste in the configuration file, uh, which is on the website. So you don't need to know what it all does. But I will be going over some of the important things and then I'm going to pause the video making the changes that are necessary and um, leaving you to it. Okay, so the host port, so this is the port we'll be connecting to on the server. It shouldn't really be that one anyway because that won't work. So I'm going to change that in the guide so don't worry about that. Um, it should be something else, let me find out. So the default port for squid should be 3128, so let's change it to that. The next thing we're going to need to do is ignore all this bit down here. Um, that's basically allowing anything locally to connect. These are the ports that it's allowed to use, um, I believe so anyway. And saying they're allowed to connect. The bit we need to actually change though is this bit here and a little bit further down. So the way this squid server is going to be set up is it's going to either require you to enter username and password to connect to be able to use it um, or you will need to be on the allowed list of IPs so this is going to have like a safe IP which is going to be my personal IP address so that when I connect to the squid server I don't need to enter a username and password because I can't bothered 
Um, so you would enter your square, uh, your IP address here, as the comments kind of suggest. If you don't want to have this enabled, then just delete um, that line and this line. The next bit we need to do is uh, one sec. Sorry about that. Um, so the next thing we're going to need to do is enter the server's IP address here. So this is the external IP, if you like, um, to the server. This is used to make sure it can send traffic out in in I believe, but uh, I may be wrong, so just ignore me if I am. You also need to enter the same IP address down here. So this bit here, and this is basically saying allow all web connections. Um, so the next bit we need to do is we're going to be setting it up to cache um, stuff. So this should hopefully make things a bit faster. So it's going to have 3 gig, well, 3,000 megabytes, which is roughly 3 gig. It's not exactly 3 gigabyte, but, you know, um, worth of disk space to cache it with. And then it's going to split this into 16 um, different directories, and I can't remember what this bit here does. So if you want a larger cache, feel free to change this. If you want a smaller cache, change it as well. The next bit is going to be how big is the maximum cache object it can have. I've set it up so it can have a gig on my other proxy server. I believe it's actually something like 16 gig. Um, but um, you can enter however much you like here. And the next bit is how much it can use of the RAM. So I've got 2 gig on here. I would not recommend using the full 2 gig because if it uses it all, your server's probably going to crash and burn. Um, so you go ahead and make all the changes which I've suggested here. And once you've done that, you can control to uh, control O to save and then control X to exit that. And uh, just give it a second. I'll go ahead and enter my details for you. So once you've saved that file and you know everything's correct, when it's just going to be... Um, actually creating those folders for the cache to be stored in. So we do this by typing in squid space hyphen z or z if you're American and you should see something like this kind of pop up which basically just creates the directories for us. The next thing we're going to be doing is making sure that the squid is enabled um, via the kernel so basically if you turn the server off and turn it back on again it'll start by default for you. The next bit is we're going to create the squid access file um, so that if we um, enter a username and password it will allow that to use or allow that user on. So we're going to type in touch to create a blank file for squid hyphen or underscore access. Then we're going to use the ht password command to create a password for the user admin. So if I click enter, it should ask me for a password. So let me just enter a password. Okay, so that um, has been added for the user admin. The next thing to do is to actually start up the server, which is quite simple. So service squid start, and there it is. The squid server is up. So realistically speaking, you should now have your server. However, you do need to know how to connect to it. So, if you do know already how to connect to your server, great, finish the video now. Thanks for watching. If not, um, I'll go ahead and quickly show you how you can view it. But just to make sure that you can tell whether you are connected or not, um, you can go ahead and type in tail hyphen capital F far log squid access log. And this will show you all incoming connections. So let me put that there. I will put, no, screw that. I'll go in Internet Explorer because I might as well show how you do it in Internet Explorer. Okay, so give us a sec. I'll just clear my um, current proxy settings. So while I'm doing this, what you need to do is you need to open up Internet Explorer and then you need to go to the options menu here and go to internet options. 
Okay, we then need to go to connections, LAN settings, and use a proxy server for your LAN. These settings will not apply to dial-up or VPN connections. Okay, so what we need to do is we need to enter our server's IP here, followed by the port. So if you give it a sec, I'll just do that now. So, um, so once you've done that, you should start seeing connections coming in. So as you can see, they're here, blah, blah, blah. Um, but if we start going on to something like MMO champion, just ignore that. I'm only suggesting that because that one has a hell of a lot of incoming connections. Look at them all. Look at all the green lines. So there we are, we now have a proxy server working with a hell of a lot of connections coming in. So if, for example, um, you've done this and you've done it where you have to have username and password, I'll just show you how you can do that now. So if you do require a password to access the um, server, you should see that there's a lot of TCP denied because you don't have permission, you haven't got a username and password. So this is where we can just enter our password. Um, once you've done this, remember credentials, it should remember them and shouldn't require you to use them anymore. So now you can see there's plenty of incoming connections now and um, everything's good to go. So I hope this video has been useful. Um, I hope you put it to good use even though it was only really meant for educational purposes. So thanks for watching and see ya. Bye.